way above my head right now is the planet Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. But despite being the biggest planet, it's actually really, really small in the sky. I crunch the numbers and it's like looking at a dime sitting at the top of the Statue of Liberty. Now, anyone can take a photo of Jupiter that looks like a blurry smudge. And I'll be honest, I've worked with telescopes professionally for a long time, but I've never actually taken a good photo of Jupiter. And that's because it's really, really hard to do. So today's mission, take the best photo of Jupiter I can. But to do that, I need to take thousands of photos. But why do I need to take so many? And why is it so hard to take a picture of it? The camera gear I have here isn't cut out for photographing Jupiter. I'm gonna need some serious equipment. But I do think it'd be cool if we used this setup to see what Jupiter looks like through a typical camera and lens combo. The first thing you probably notice is how tiny it looks in the photo. But if we zoom in, we can actually see some cool stuff. Those bright dots around the planet are the moons of Jupiter. They're called the Galilean moons, discovered by Galileo. Go figure the name. <laughs> Now, Jupiter actually has over 90 moons going around it, but these are the brightest that we can see. Now, if we compare my photo to one taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, it's easy to see that my photo is way better. <laughs> I'm just I'm just kidding. Just clarifying in case anyone really thought that I think that. Obviously, my photo is lacking a lot of detail that Hubble captured, and I want to see those swirling cloud bands and storms on the surface of Jupiter. So outside of getting access to a $16 billion telescope, how can I do that? Well, I need to zoom in and I need to zoom in a lot more. I think I'm gonna need a bigger lens or better yet, a telescope. But big telescopes are really expensive and I don't have one of those things just lying around my house. But I do know somebody who might have something I can use. So my buddy Bray Falls has a telescope that I can use to capture Jupiter. And in addition to being one of the best astrophotographers in the world, he also runs the largest observatory on planet Earth. But it's not the largest in the typical sense. And I'll show you what I mean because that's where I'm headed. This is Starfront Observatories. Now I'm told, this is the largest observatory, not because there's an enormous telescope here, but because it has the most operational telescopes in the world. Now, last time I was here, there was about 20 telescopes, but how many more can there actually be? There are over 400 telescopes here at the time of recording, with more being installed every single day. But the one that I'm gonna be using to shoot Jupiter is this one right here. What was that? This, is, this isn't the one? Oh. Oh, it's that one. <laughs> this is the one I'm gonna be using to shoot Jupiter with. You know, I've been involved in astronomy for a long time, but most people don't know that if I hadn't gone down the space nerd route, I would have been involved in music. And lately, I've been bringing music back into my life. And it's all thanks to Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. If you haven't heard of Skillshare, it's the largest online learning community with thousands of expert-led classes in music, business, photography, and more. I already play guitar and drums, but singing has always been on my bucket list. And while I know I sound incredible in the car, if I actually want to improve, I need to put in the work. Just like staying active keeps you healthy, Making time for creativity keeps your mind sharp and inspired. So I've been getting my reps in with the class Sing Any Song on Skillshare. It's been super fun and I've already learned techniques I never knew before. So whether you wanna start a side hustle, dive into a new hobby, or just carve out more time for creativity this year, Skillshare has you covered. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a free month trial of Skillshare. So get started today. This telescope is big. It's way bigger than my camera lens here. Now, zoom or magnification is determined by a number called focal length. My camera lens has a focal length of 200 millimeters, but this monster right here has over 2,000. 
that means we're going to get really close up to Jupiter. It can get such a long focal length because of its unique telescope design, which uses a combination of mirrors and lenses instead of just lenses like those on my DSLR camera. But I want to get even closer. So to do that, I'm going to use this thing right here. It's called a 2x Barlow lens. So that means we're going to be at 4,700 millimeters of focal length. But Jupiter has a unique challenge. You already know that it takes 24 hours for Earth to complete one rotation. On Jupiter, that number is 10 hours. Jupiter is a thousand times the size of Earth, yet it finishes one rotation in 10 hours. That thing's booking it. That means when we go to photograph Jupiter, we only have 60 seconds to capture it before all of the details that we're capturing start to rotate and smear and smudge, ruining our image. Now, 60 seconds may seem like a long time, but it's actually not, and let me tell you why. This is a single photo of Jupiter. Notice how grainy it is. That graininess, or what we call noise, is hiding a lot of those details we want to see. I covered this in the past video, but in short, space photographers fight noise by taking lots of photos and stacking them. The details stay the same, but the noise changes, so stacking evens it out. Well, it's already getting dark out here, so it's prime time to look at Jupiter. Let's go ahead and get a live view and see what it looks like. What we're looking at here is a live view of Jupiter through the telescope. Now, when you see this, what do you notice? Let me give you a hint about what's going on. Do you remember that banger of a song when we were growing up? You know the one I'm talking about. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> the reason why stars twinkle is the same reason why we're seeing Jupiter this way. Let's imagine for a moment that this bowl of water here is the atmosphere that sits between us and Jupiter. When the water is still, you get a clear view of it. But in reality, it's almost never still. Sometimes the air only moves a little bit. Other times, it moves a lot. And when it moves, we see Jupiter wobbling. But every now and then, we get lucky and the water appears still. These moments happen for the tiniest fractions of time. But if we take lots and lots of photos, we increase our chances of getting those lucky moments. And there's a name for this technique, lucky imaging. So if we want to take a good photo of Jupiter, we need to take thousands of shots in a very short space of time. My regular DSLR can take a lot of photos, but the problem is it has to transfer all of those files over and those are really big file sizes and that's going to limit how fast we can take shots. Instead, we're going to use a camera that's specifically made for photographing planets. It may not look like a camera, but it is. It's called a planetary camera and it's perfect for capturing photos of things like Jupiter. Let's take a look at a simulation of what Jupiter would look like if I had my DSLR attached to the telescope. Look at all of that wasted space, that blank area where there's nothing going on. That's wasted data. This planetary camera has a much smaller sensor, so it's only going to capture the information we need. This means we're going to have smaller file sizes, which means we can shoot way, way faster, up to 136 frames per second. Perfect for shooting Jupiter. So we've got a telescope that's going to zoom in on Jupiter. We got a camera that's going to shoot as fast as a machine gun. I think it's time to see what happens when we take thousands of photos of Jupiter. OK, we're going to do this in four steps. Step one, point the telescope to Jupiter. I already did that. Step two, take lots of photos. I've got everything dialed in here, so I'm just going to click this button here, which is capture 60 seconds worth of images of Jupiter. And there we go. It's taking photos of Jupiter. All right. It's already taken 300 and now it's at 400 and 800, 900. Boom, we're done. We just took 3,844 photos of Jupiter. Step three, process the photos. Now, instead of going through each and every one of those thousand frames looking for those lucky moments, there's software that will do that for me, but it does even more. It'll take all of those lucky moments and then it'll actually stack them together for me so I can get a sharp final image. Step four. Oh, I don't know why I said there's four steps. I guess there's only three steps. I guess we could make step four like revealing the photo, right? That'll be the reveal. All right. Step four is the reveal. After all of that work, all of this awesome stuff, please enjoy my best photo of Jupiter so far. So I did end up with a photo of Jupiter, but if I'm being honest, I 
don't really like how it turned out. I just know we can do better. We've got the right equipment. We've got powerful software. But there's one thing that makes planetary photography truly difficult. You see, the night I shot Jupiter, a freak windstorm had blown through earlier in the day, kicking up dust, creating the worst possible conditions for photographing the planets. If the conditions are really bad, finding those lucky moments to capture Jupiter is nearly impossible, no matter how good your equipment is. Shooting in poor conditions is like painting a picture on a shaking canvas. No matter how fine your brushes are, no matter how masterful you are at painting, you're just not gonna get those fine details. Fortunately, that insanely windy day was an exceptionally rare occurrence. So now that the wind has passed, let's go and try and photograph Jupiter one more time. Step one, point the telescope at Jupiter. Step two, take lots of photos. Step three, process the photos. Now we're gonna process the photos again, but this time I did something a little different. I reached out to a friend, an insanely skilled astrophotographer, Andrew McCarthy. He filled me in on a tool that just might take these images to the next level. Do you remember when I said we have a limited amount of time we can capture Jupiter because it's rotating so fast? Well, what if I told you there is a way we can capture Jupiter for even longer, even with the planet rotating? Well, that's exactly what this tool does. It's called WinJupos, a software that corrects for planetary rotation, meaning we can shoot Jupiter for longer and stack even more frames for a sharper final image. So with this new technique, I took an entirely new approach to photographing Jupiter, this time taking thousands and thousands more photos than previously. 400 years ago, Galileo pointed his telescope at Jupiter for the first time, revealing a world no one had ever truly seen. Today, space telescopes give us breathtaking views, but there's something powerful about capturing it yourself. So here's what happens when you take 29,965 photos of Jupiter. If there's one thing astrophotography has taught me, it's determination. Every challenge, weather, equipment, processing, is just part of the journey. The universe doesn't give up its secrets easily, but if you stay curious and keep pushing forward, the results are always worth it.